This video is powered by the pros at Pascal Air Plumbing and Electric. Arkansas owned, Arkansas operated. GoPascal.com. Um, At are your ears still ringing uh, from uh, from your experience at Bud Walton? Yeah, it was an incredible experience. Of course, uh, my ears are also ringing from you know one thing I love, guys, is is you know social media just brings out the best and worst in people. I did have the I, I will say this: it was incredible uh, when Caleb Battle hit that three to go up by I think eleven. Uh, it was as loud as any arena I've ever been in that I can remember. And then, of course, I had so I had 99% of Hogs fans say, thank you for coming. We're so happy to have you. And then I had another 1% that was like, well, I mean, that wasn't as loud as Auburn. Well, I mean, that wasn't even like the fifth loudest stadium. I, Bud Walton is so much better. It's like, guys, everybody relax. We just beat Duke. It was a fun game. Um, and, yeah, it was loud and electric, and it was so much fun. Uh, and I'm so grateful to, to everybody in Arkansas uh, that came up to me or whatever. But, yeah, I had an absolute blast, and it was an incredible game on Wednesday night. Well, um, what stands out to you about this guy? I, I mean, was, were you surprised that Arkansas didn't just compete well with Duke, that they beat them, led the entire second half without a guy like Tremont Mark? I mean, what really stood out to you from that game, specifically the game, not the arena or the crowd? Yeah, you know, um, I'm not surprised by the result, uh, and I'll tell you, it's for two reasons. One, um, you know, home court advantage is so important in college basketball. Two, you know, I was able to get to shoot around on, you know, uh, I guess it was Wednesday morning, and certainly don't want to give away any of Coach Muss's secrets, but you could see that the team was very locked in, very focused, and, and you know, everybody was very focused. Um, and the third thing is I don't want to take anything at all away from Duke because, or, or, or away from Arkansas in saying this because when I say this, I think people will think that it's a slight at Arkansas. I'm a little bit more down on Duke than I expected to be this time of year. And I remember I think you guys asking me about this a week or two ago, kind of in the lead-up to the game, um, but Duke was my preseason national championship pick. So I don't, I don't want to sit here and, oh, a typical you know, guy that doesn't like Duke – but I, they're not quite where I thought they would be. And so I thought that what Arkansas does specifically, um, you know, athletically and just the, the size and athleticism that they would have with the Chandler Lawson types, with the Trevin Brazil types, I did think they would give uh, Duke some problems. So ultimately, am I surprised? Not really, just because of the urgency that I knew Arkansas would play with. Um, you know, I think that was another big takeaway, and I don't mean to go too long on this answer, but – you know, I think myself coming in as an outsider, you just think Duke's in town. This is a great game and a great win. But I think hearing Coach Muss at the podium after, you really got the sense of how important this game was. He basically called it a must win, and I think there's probably something to that of, yeah, you want to enjoy beating Duke at home, but there's also, I think, a little bit of a sense of relief. And I think it's not just from the coaching staff, but from the fans as well of, you lose that game, all of a sudden you're looking at four and four. You're really going to enter December without much of an out-of-conference resume to speak of. Now you get back on the winning track, and I'll say this. I know there's probably more to take out of uh, out of Wednesday night, but I'll tell you, that Furman team that's coming in on Monday is really good, and, and hopefully uh, a couple days off we'll, we'll get that team locked back in because Furman's a really good team that if you don't pay attention to, they, they can keep things close and competitive. Aaron, uh, to, to see Trevion Brazil up close, I, I've kind of, his NBA comparable, I've, I've kind of thought of him as like a Christoph Przingis. I know he's a little smaller, maybe a Tayshawn Prince. Who do you have him at? Who do you think he is at that next level? Like, who's a comparable? Interesting. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I, off the top of my head, I'm trying to think. You know, I think Porzingis is good. And I just think in, in, in the bigger picture, um, you know, <laughs> like whenever I heard other people, not not you guys, not me, but whenever you heard people try to pick apart Arkansas last year, well, I mean, they just got hot in the tournament. They weren't even very good. It's like, yeah, because they didn't have a six foot eleven guy that hits threes in people's faces, and oh by the way, had eleven boards on the other end. Um, and so, you know, and, and obviously going back to last year, they didn't have Nick Smith either. But I bring it up because again, that was another interesting thing about being there was, was hearing Coach Musk kind of talk about uh, his impact on, on games and 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 just like the fact that he had twenty one and eleven, and Musk said, <clears throat> "Excuse me." 
that he's really just starting to scratch the surface of his potential, that, that basically he had 11 boards, and Coach Must said, listen, with his athleticism and skills, that I think he can go out there and get 20. I don't want to be underappreciative of an 11-rebound night, but that's the kind of kid that you know I, I, I think can go for 15 to 20 on any given night in, in terms of the rebounding category. So <clears throat> to answer the question, Matt, um, I, I don't know exactly what NBA player I would compare him to, but that dude very much is an NBA player uh, and excited to see how he continues to progress as he gets more confidence coming off that injury because I think the ceiling is really, really, really high for that kid. Yeah, he's just a baby. He he's 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 only gonna get he's only gonna get better. I, I do wanna ask you about the one tonight. There's the Pac twelve championship, the last one ever or whatever it's gonna be after this. And and Phil and I were talking earlier. I I, I do like both these quarterbacks. Bo Nick's so accurate. My, Michael Penix is the the total package with those receivers he has. Which one of these teams has the better defense though? You know, is is both these is it the first one to forty for for this type of game? Who do you like tonight? Um, well, it's interesting. You know, I, I, I thought coming out of last week, um, you know, Washington winning another close game, Oregon with another blowout. I thought, you know, it'd be a pseudo hot take to say that I think Oregon should be favored. Um, because you know, in my, in my head, I was thinking, okay, Washington has the head to head win. They're undefeated. And then you see the point spread comes out and Oregon's a nine and a half point favorite. So I, 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 I do think it is kind of interesting that again, Washington has the head to head win, I haven't really heard anybody make the compelling argument for them, though. Now, I haven't consumed a ton of media this week, but it doesn't feel like there's a lot of people saying, yeah, like Washington's going to win this game outright. So I think there's going to be a chip on their shoulder. And then I think to your point, Matt, uh, you know, it's it's not, you know, rocket science is, you know, whoever's defense gets more stops. Obviously, Oregon's has just been better over the course of the year. Washington is really bad, at least statistically in the secondary. Now, part of it is you just face a lot of really good quarterbacks in the Pac-12. Um but I do think Oregon's the better team. I do think Oregon probably uh, ends up winning that game. And I'll tell you, I don't think it should be this way. But, you know, I think even if we have a, a loss by a Texas, a loss by a whatever, I can already feel the, the per, I can already feel the conversation percolating of, you know, how good is Oregon's resume really? Should the loser of the SEC championship game get in, say, at Georgia, if they were to lose to Alabama? I can already hear that conversation starting to percolate. I think it's dumb, but I just bring it up to say that I think Oregon wins, and I, I you know, I think that might be a conversation we're having come, you know, midday tomorrow, depending on what happens with Georgia Bama. I mean, I'm with you. I, you go undefeated, and you're in a Power Five league. I have a real difficult time leaving you out of a out of a uh, a four team playoff when there can only be three undefeated teams right now. So, I mean, I just. <laughs> You, you can't leave out a you can't leave out a twelve and zero Florida State. You can't leave out a twelve and zero uh, or thirteen and zero uh, Washington team. You know, I mean, these are. I, agree. Yeah, I mean, they're not the same as the SEC. But man, I mean, undefeated for me is undefeated. And and I've, I've I mean, I feel like I might be a little bit in the in the minority about this. I want to see the well, teams that have had the best seasons. And I don't know sometimes if we really define properly what the best team is supposed to be like what that means what the committee is going by are they going by you know if you were to line up alabama against washington who's going to win is that what you're going by or are you going by body of work and 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 their actual resume because that's what it means to me no and i i think it's a i think it's a a, i'll say this i think the florida state thing is a very interesting conversation because it's an interesting conversation to me because it's the rare one where I don't know that I have a super strong opinion about it. Like usually, I mean, you guys know me pretty much every major topic. I I, I lean one way or the other, but I see both sides. Um, I I still think there is one more data point. And I, I, you know, listen, I think if, 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 you know, if Alabama beats Georgia 30 to three and Texas beats Oklahoma state, you know, 66 to seven and Florida state beats Louisville 10 to seven on a walk-off field goal. Like, you know, like that changes the conversation, but, but you know, I, the, the one thing I will say, first of all, I don't know. I, first of all, I, I lean more towards your side, Phil of 13 and 0 is 13 and 0. Like, like you don't get there by accident. 
Um, but I also, I probably shouldn't be, but like, I was kind of surprised that people were as passionate about all of these different topics and, and given that the game still have yet to be played. And like, if Alabama yeah. loses tomorrow, there really isn't an argument to put them in. If Texas loses tomorrow, there isn't an argument to put them in. And so it's like, why is everyone getting so fired up about Florida state when all these teams still have a game to be played? You use the word there, argument. We kind of we kind of crave those arguments, right? That's what it's all about, you know. Yeah. The argument changes though next year, man. I mean, is it going to be, is it better or worse? You know, we'll be we'll be talking about, oh, are you going to let Mizzou in? Does Ole Miss get in? Yeah, I mean, you know, what about Oklahoma? I mean, you're, there, sure there'll be the conversation about the top four because they get the buys, but really the conversation re- kind of moves to who gets first round games at their campus site. And who's number 13 and who's number 14? I mean, it could, you still get to argue, though, next year, A.T., so don't worry about it. We'll all be happy because we can well, still argue. The one thing I will say, and I'll, I'll try to be quick because I don't know how much time we have left, like, the, I, I don't think most people have taken the time to consider, like, how, like how just differently – we're going to consume college football next year. Like, 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 you know, again, and, and I think the conversation started last week with Michigan, Ohio state. Like if this is next year, uh, that game, I don't want to say it's meaningless, but if I, but those two teams would in theory play again in the big 10 championship game a year from now, there will be no divisions in the big 10, just like the sec. Um, and then if Ohio state wins, you know, that Michigan game just isn't as important. Um, uh, you know, I think even in the preseason, right, everybody puts out their final four, and we are uh, – the word you just used, we argue like, oh, you picked Bama. I pick, it's like is someone – like am I, am I or you or whoever – is somebody get, like like is anybody putting out their top twelve next year? Like is Cole Kublick going to be on ESPN? Like yeah, I got Ole Miss at the eleven spot and uh, you know Penn State at number twelve and you know I, I don't know like is Paul Feinbaum going to do that? And then people are going to argue. I, I don't know. It's just it's it's interesting to me. I do think we're going to lose a lot of what makes college football special. The postseason will be better. I'm curious to see what what impact it has on the regular season, but it is going to be a completely different sport uh, to consume. And I, I, like I said, I don't think people have fully realized that just yet. So you get to go to uh, Allen Fieldhouse tonight, which was so so cool. I don't know if you've been there, but you got to see the uh, no? original rules of basketball and the whole Kansas Hall of Fame setup. It's 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 unique. There's nothing quite like hey, it. That's a unique real building quick, overall. Is that open just a all day? Building. Uh, I think I don't know if it's open all day. It's open a good chunk of the day. I mean, they show that thing yeah. off. They don't try to keep people okay. away from it. And that's a building that I think yeah. can get just as loud as Bud Walton because they get a crowd that's about as it's about as big, if not a little bit larger, sometimes. Well, I I have I'm about an hour away from Lawrence, and I'm trying to time out. You know, like I it's not like like when I was in Fayetteville, you know, I went to campus and then I could come back to a hotel. I can't really do that. So I'm just trying to time out when I should actually leave and how much there is to do on campus. So I might have to check out the original rules of basketball, Phil. Bet online is your number one source for all your betting needs. Get the latest odds, lines, and matchup reports for baseball, boxing, golf, and more. Bet online continues to be the fastest and easiest way to place your wagers, including live betting and your favorite casino and card games available to play right from your phone. Head to the website or use your mobile device to sign up today and get in on the action. Remember to use our promo code BELIEVE. That's B L E A V. For your 50% welcome bonus on your first deposit. Bet online where the game starts.